Hello friends, welcome back to this series of socket programming and uh, from today onwards I will try to put some new videos around socket programming so that we can understand few of the APIs which are used in the socket programming. In the real world application development, these APIs are used because in our socket server and socket client program, we have mostly used the hard coded values for the server name, for the server IP. But in real world application, you need to understand the use of these APIs, get host name. You need to understand the significance of this WSA startup and you need to understand this set SOC opt. So I am going to discuss about these two things today. First, I will discuss about get host name. So let's see quickly what does this do? This get host name returns an integer. Returns an integer which returns whether uh, the call to get host name was successful or not and what it actually does this get host name can give you a name of the machine your name your machine name which is uh, which will be stored in this the first argument right so for that you need to create a character array str host name you need to write something like this and uh, the length of the machine name can be 32 and that is why I have given 32 here. You can provide more than 32, but I have given here 32. Right, so get host name. I am just going to give the name get str host name. And then I am just going to provide the length. What will be the maximum length? What the maximum length will be for this name that we are going to take in this str host name. And then what we are going to do if an ret is smaller than 0, then we will print that our call failed call failed otherwise in case n rate returns 0 which means that the call was successful then in that case it will return 0 and uh, we can see the name of the machine name of the host where my application is running okay name of the host and there you need to go str host name so you just need to run it just build it and just do an f5 you can see that the call has been failed why this failed let me explain you. I have explained it earlier as well in the very first video when I was starting the socket programming for server. Uh, and I hope uh, you still remember that thing. So the reason is that I have not used this WSA startup. So to make any socket API call working, you first need to call this function WSA startup. So for that, I need to do, thing, do two things WSA data W and then you need to just call WSA startup and here you need to pass two arguments make word I'm using to provide the version minimum and max versions and then address of W and this function also returns 0 or minus 1 minus 1 if it uh, if, if it fails and uh, 0 if it passes if it is successful right I'm not going to check it because I know that this will this will work fine so for a good practice you can write the code like this int an ret and then you can check whether the return value is smaller than 0 or equal to 0. Now let's see if it works fine or not. So let's see start debugging and let's see what is the output. This time it should give me the name of the host. Okay so this time it has given me the name of the host. So the thing is that you need to use WSS startup function call before any API call. You cannot expect any API call to work fine until you call WSA startup in Windows, right? Please remember that this is for Windows only. In case you are not using Windows, you are writing a, your application for the uh, Unix platform or the Linux platform, then in that case, you don't need to call this WSA startup. There is no need of this WSA startup. But in case of Windows, if you are writing your socket programming for the uh, Windows platform then in that case you must need to call this WSS startup before any socket API call okay so let's see let's verify what what is the name of my laptop on which I am recording this so yes the name of the laptop is this 
which is again same as my application return right so let's close this so this is the significance of WSS startup and this is how you can use the gate host name you can use the gate host name function uh, when you are creating your own application rather than putting the hard coded IP because that is not a good practice at all so you can get the host name of your application and using the other APIs which I will discuss in the later videos using those APIs like uh, I think the name of the API is gate host by name so using that you can get the IP addresses so using those APIs and using this API you can create the IP address you can get the IP address of your own server and then you can use those bind and uh, connect calls and listen calls for uh, for the server okay so as of now when I created the demo for the client and server you might have seen that I have used the uh, hard coded values or the macro like in adder any there was a macro in adder any if you remember in adder underscore any so if you remember that we have used uh, for the server side program so those things are not uh, not the good practice at all uh, when you are writing a good uh, socket server programming so you need to know about these uh, APIs so that is why I have uh, just decided to uh, create some videos around these APIs okay so this was all about the gate host name and uh, now I will discuss uh, about this set sock opt okay so to not waste more time I have just uh, written this piece of code for you already so I will just copy it and I will just paste it so just to save the time I have written it already so WSA data WSA startup all these things are fine these things you already know if you don't know you need to go to my uh, you need to go to the previous videos or you can say the first or second video where I have explained all these things right I have not explained this thing set sock opt right and uh, I have called this bind and listen here right so I'm just going to explain you about this set sock opt what it what it does Okay, so to, ex, uh, to understand what is the purpose of set sock opt, uh, if you want to study this thing in detail, you can go to the MSDN site and you can just type it set sock opt and you can see the details. But I'm not going in that much detail. I'm just going to tell you uh, on a broader perspective that how this call is used and what is the purpose of using this function, this API, right? So let me give you an example. I'm just going to comment it comment the call to set sock opt right and let's see one scenario and with that scenario you can understand that why we should use set sock opt okay suppose there is a there is a server application that I'm going to write and if I'm writing a server application then I need to bind my uh, bind my socket to a particular address to a particular port address and then I just need to start listening to that particular port for the incoming connection from the clients okay so this is the port number on which my server is listening right is it possible for the other server or any other application which is trying to which is trying to listen to the new connections from the client on the same port will it be allowed right will it be allowed or not we are going to see that the answer is the simple answer is that no you cannot allow two servers or you can say the same instance of once say two instances of the same server to listen to the same port and bind to the same port right the simple answer is that this one and uh, the more detailed answer is that yes we have an API which is called set sock opt using this API we can set our server we can provide the option to our server to let other servers or to let other instance of the same server to listen to the same port okay so first let's see if we can listen if our application server can listen to the new clients on the same port if two servers which are running on the same port will they be able to listen to the same port for the new connections or not let's see that so just press f5 and let's see what happens so this one is listening let me just uh, introduce some more code so that we are able to see some output so here I'm just going to write like bind successful the bind successful and uh, here also I'm going to provide an else part and here I will provide the listen was successful
okay so let's see what happens so builds build solution and then we will just run it so press f5 it will start debugging so bind successful and listen successful let's go to the path where the same application exe has been placed socket server has been placed there and here also i'm going to run the same application right so the second instance of the same server here the bind and listen both failed right why because we cannot listen to the same port again and again right if we want to allow it to happen then in that case we just need to do this we just need to call this function set sock opt this set sock opt takes the first argument as socket the second argument as the level of the socket sole socket i have provided here you can go to the details of this uh, these uh, values or other options on the msdn but uh, in this uh, video i am not going to explain them in detail the next one is the option like how you can how you want to use this set sock opt the instruction to the set sock opt is provided by this argument so here i have provided the instruction that i want to reuse the port address i want the others the other servers to other server to reuse this port address right and the next argument is this one you need to remember this one opt value is 0 and the length of this is op size of opt value i just need to provide the address of length type cast it to const char asterisk and the last argument is the length itself right so opt value is the, what is the significance of opt value if i provide it to 1 then it means that uh, other servers will not only be able to bind and listen to the same port but they will be also able to connect to the new connections connect we will they will be able to allow the new connections to connect new client to connect to this port right so there are two things one is you can bind to you one server other server can bind to one of the ports uh, the same port on which you are listening and the other thing is that you can connect as well so there are two things if we provide one then in that case we allow both this servers the other servers can listen to the same port and they can also accept the connection but if we provide zero then in that case the other servers can only bind and listen to the port but they cannot accept a new connection okay so this this value has this significance right so as of now i am going to provide it one and we will test it with zero as well right so i hope you are able to understand what is the significance of this value and let's see again what this program does if i run it again just need to comment it i just need to remove this because end rate has already been defined so let's press f5 so the first instance as usual is going to run fine it will show me the bind successful and the listen successful now let's see the other instance open the command prompt and just do the socket server.exe and you can see that the second instance as well is giving me bind successful and listen successful so this was one of the uses of the set sock opt similarly there are many other uses right if i go to the definition of this reuse adder you can see that there are many other values for the option flag for socket you can debug the connection you can reuse the connection that i have uh, you can reuse the port address that i have just shown you you can Uh, provide an option to keep alive the connections you can provide an option to broadcast the things you can uh, allow the uh, socket to use the low loop back right bypass hardware and possible if uh, when possible and uh, then uh, out of bound data if you want to receive then you need to provide this one so anything you if you want to enable or disable explicitly you can use set sock opt right so i have just shown you one use which is mostly done by most of the applications Uh, by the programmers right so i hope you are able to understand the set sock opt option here right if i let's see with zero as well right so with zero as well it will be able to run perfectly fine because we are not going to connect anything that connection thing uh, from the client we will display we will uh, demonstrate in some other video in the coming videos okay so let's see again what happens so the bind is successful listen is successful and let's come to the debug folder where my exe is created so let's uh, see again bind and listen is successful right so i hope you understood this and in the next video in the coming videos or in the next video itself i will try to uh, demonstrate this one as well when i will provide it zero then a new connection from the client it should not connect it connect to it 
and if I will provide it one, then the other server will, will be able to connect to the new clients uh, on the same port, right? So that thing we will discuss in the next video. So till then, have a nice day. Bye-bye. And please like, subscribe my channel and give me the feedback if you need something else to understand. And please share, share these videos with your friends if you find that these videos are really good, good and useful, right? So we will meet soon. Till then, have a nice day and bye.